I'm sure you've heard the news, Russia and China are shaking up the global aviation industry and the world is watching Brussels for answers. Welcome to Smart Updates, your trusted source for breaking headlines, global insights and sharp analysis from around the world. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an update. Tension filled the Brussels conference room, a heavy silence settling over the assembled leaders. The air was thick with unease, as if everyone present sensed that the decisions made here would echo far beyond these walls. Suddenly, the French trade minister slammed a thick dossier onto the polished table, his voice cutting through the tension. He declared the new Russia-China engine pact for the C919 an unacceptable escalation, a move that threatened to upend the balance of power in global aviation. This wasn't just business, it was a direct challenge to Europe's aerospace dominance, a sector that had long been a source of pride, innovation, and economic strength for the continent. An Italian representative, voice tinged with concern, warned that Europe's intricate supply chains, built over decades on Western technological supremacy, now faced unraveling. The very foundation of their industry was at risk, the German delegate, usually measured, openly blamed recent Western policy missteps. In particular he pointed to the US engine ban, arguing it had inadvertently pushed China and Russia closer together, forging a partnership that could not be easily undone. Instead of crippling China's ambitions, the ban had only accelerated its drive for self-sufficiency. It handed Moscow a new partner, and together, they began ramping up production at a pace that alarmed European observers. Now Europe confronted a formidable state-backed rival, one that combined Russian engineering expertise with China's vast manufacturing power. The scale and speed of their collaboration was unprecedented, delegates debated the risks in hushed urgent tones, what advanced technology would Russia be willing to share? Could China rapidly absorb and improve upon it? The questions came faster than the answers. How quickly could these two giants merge their expertise and resources? Would their combined efforts leapfrog years of European research and development? Russia, isolated by years of sanctions, was desperate for new markets and fresh investment. Its aerospace sector, once world-leading, now needed a lifeline. China, meanwhile, needed engine know-how to finally break its dependence on Western technology. For Beijing, this was a chance to leap forward and claim a stake in the future of flight. Together, they threatened to reshape global aviation for decades to come, challenging the very order that Europe had helped build and lead. The fear in Brussels was palpable. This was about more than just contracts or competition. It was about the future of Europe's high-tech industry, the livelihoods of millions, and the continent's place in a rapidly changing world. The meeting ended with no easy answers, only the grim realization that a long, difficult reckoning had begun. The delegates filed out, each carrying the weight of uncertainty on their shoulders. The storm over Brussels was just the beginning, a warning that the world of aviation and Europe's role within it was about to change forever. The shock in Brussels came from a landmark deal that few saw coming. In a world where aviation technology is tightly guarded and alliances are often drawn along political lines, this agreement sent ripples through the corridors of power across Europe. Russia's United Engine Corporation and China's AECC announced they would co-develop a brand new high-bypass turbofan engine for the C919, China's ambitious passenger jet. This wasn't just a business partnership, it was a strategic move, signaling a new era of cooperation between two major powers in aerospace. The collaboration was a direct challenge to the Western aerospace supply chain, which has long dominated the global market for commercial jet engines. For decades, Western companies have set the standards, controlled the technology, and dictated the terms. The C919, China's answer to the A320 and 737, had relied solely on the Leap 1C engine, a state-of-the-art power plant built by CFM International a joint venture between GE and Safran. But this reliance was a vulnerability, one that Western export controls and shifting geopolitics had recently exposed. The new partnership aimed to end that dependency, giving China its first non-Western power source for a flagship jet. For Chinese engineers, it was a chance to learn from Russian expertise, while for Russian firms, it was an opportunity to access China's vast market and resources. With hundreds of C919s already ordered by Chinese airlines, swapping in a homegrown engine would insulate China's growing fleet from foreign pressure. It would also send a powerful message. China was ready to chart its own course in aviation, 
For China, this collaboration is a shortcut to mastering the most complex part of aircraft manufacturing, jet engines. For Russia, it's a lifeline, keeping its advanced programs alive and relevant in a world where sanctions have cut off many Western partnerships. Russia brings decades of engine expertise, with a legacy stretching back to the Cold War and a proven track record in both military and civilian aviation. China brings not only capital and manufacturing scale, but also a relentless drive to innovate and catch up with the West. Its factories are among the largest and most advanced in the world. Together, they hope to break the West's monopoly on commercial aviation, creating a new competitor in a market long dominated by Boeing and Airbus. The alliance is bold, risky, and could redefine the global aerospace landscape. If successful, it could shift the balance of power in the skies for decades to come. The stakes for both nations and the world couldn't be higher. This is more than just an engineering project. It's a geopolitical gambit with far-reaching consequences. The C919 is no longer just a plane. It's a symbol of a new era, representing the ambitions and determination of two nations seeking a greater role in global aviation. The race for aviation independence is on, and the world is watching to see who will take the lead in this high-stakes contest. For decades, a handful of Western giants, GE, Pratt & Whitney, Rolls-Royce and Safran have dominated jet engine manufacturing, shaping the very core of global aviation. These companies are not just industry leaders, they are the gatekeepers of the skies, setting the pace for technological progress and safety standards worldwide. Their technological lead is built on billions in R&D, relentless innovation, and a fortress of intellectual property. Every year, they invest staggering sums to push the boundaries of what's possible, from fuel efficiency to emissions reduction, ensuring their engines remain at the cutting edge. Developing a new engine takes years, billions of dollars, and mastery of extreme material science. The process demands not only technical expertise, but also a deep understanding of aerodynamics, metallurgy, and precision engineering. Disciplines where these companies excel. Western safety standards, enforced by the FAA and ESA, set the global benchmark. These rigorous regulations ensure that every engine meets the highest levels of reliability and performance, making them the gold standard for airlines and manufacturers everywhere. Airlines trust these brands because of their proven reliability and safety. For passengers and pilots alike, the names GE, Pratt & Whitney, Rolls-Royce and Safran inspire confidence, representing decades of flawless operation and innovation. This is the fortress China and Russia now aim to breach. Breaking into this exclusive club means overcoming not just technical barriers, but also decades of accumulated know-how and global trust. Relying on Western engines means accepting Western leverage. For emerging powers, dependence on foreign technology can limit strategic autonomy and expose them to political or economic pressure. By pooling resources, China and Russia seek not just a new engine but a new, global standard. Their collaboration is about more than catching up, it's about reshaping the balance of power in aviation for the decades ahead. The battle is for more than machinery. It's for the future of aviation itself. Whoever controls the next generation of engines will help define how the world connects, travels, and trades. The oligopoly faces its first real challenger, a test not just of technology, but of vision, ambition, and the will to lead the skies of tomorrow. The summer of 2025 changed everything. The U.S. abruptly banned engine exports to China, halting C919 production and exposing China's vulnerability. Though the ban lasted only six weeks, it was a wake-up call for Beijing. The risk of dependency became a crisis, making a domestic engine an urgent national priority. China's CJ-1000A engine was years behind, but the ban unleashed a flood of resources and political will. The U.S. hoped to gain leverage, but instead pushed China and Russia closer. Russia, with its independent engine expertise, became China's logical partner. The ban forged the conditions for the Sino-Russian alliance that now threatens Western dominance. A single policy misstep reshaped the global aviation race. The consequences are still unfolding. China's drive to build its own commercial jet is central to its Made in China 2025 strategy. The C919 is a symbol of national ambition, but the engine remains the missing piece. Despite heavy investment, China's CJ-1000A engine lags behind. Russia offers a shortcut, 
decades of hard-won expertise in engine design and materials. By collaborating, China hopes to leapfrog years of trial and error, the ultimate goal, a fully domestic aviation ecosystem, immune to foreign pressure. The Russian partnership is a stepping stone, not the finish line. For China, true aviation independence is now within reach. Russia's expertise is forged by necessity. Western sanctions forced Russia to revive its own engine industry, leading to the PD-14 for the MC-21 jet. The PD-14's success proves Russia can still build world-class engines, even in isolation. But Russia's market is too small to sustain next-gen development alone. Teaming with China gives Russia access to capital and scale, turning isolation into a strategic asset. For Moscow the alliance is both economic opportunity and geopolitical victory. Sanctions meant to weaken Russia have made its technology more attractive to China. Together, they're building a new technological axis. Europe's aerospace giants, led by Airbus and Safran, now face a direct challenge from the east. The fear isn't just lost sales, it's the erosion of Europe's technological leadership. A C919 with a Sino-Russian engine could start in China, then spread to Asia, Africa, and beyond. Lower costs and fewer political strings could attract new customers, chipping away at the Airbus-Boeing duopoly. The alliance could split the global aviation system into rival blocks, complicating safety and regulation. Europe must innovate, strengthen supply chains and persuade partners to stick with Western standards. The stakes, economic strength, global influence, and the future of safe, unified air travel. The EU's response will shape the next era of aviation. The biggest hurdle for the Sino-Russian engine isn't engineering, it's certification. Without FAA or ESA approval, the C919 can't fly internationally. Western regulators will scrutinize every detail and trust built by GE and Rolls-Royce can't be replicated overnight. China will start with its domestic market, using state-owned airlines to prove the engine's reliability. Success at home is just the first step. Global acceptance will take years, if not decades. Airlines demand proven safety, efficiency, and low costs over decades of service. The alliance has political will, but the climb to global trust is just beginning. Earning a place in the skies will be the ultimate test. The Russia-China engine partnership marks a seismic shift in global aviation. For the first time, a credible alternative to Western aerospace is emerging. The world's aviation market may split, a Western bloc led by Airbus and Boeing, and an Eastern bloc centered on China and Russia. Lower-cost Chinese jets could transform air travel in developing nations, but a divided system brings new risks and complexity. The West must choose, see this as a threat, or innovate to stay ahead. The rise of the C919 is a wake-up call for the old duopoly. The skies are entering a new, more competitive era. 